you can draw this in Procreate. During this Procreate tutorial, I will guide you through the steps of creating this lovely landscape with a house. We'll start by creating simple hill shapes. We'll add some trees, create texture. And during this tutorial, we will be using the perspective tool to create our little house. And once you have reached the end of the tutorial, you will feel so proud of your result that you'll just want to share it. If you are sharing it on social media, on Instagram, then don't forget to tag me. If you tag me in the image and not just in the description, I will be able to find your work and perhaps we'll see your work in the next video. And check out these amazing results from my friends at Patreon. Patreon is the place you need to go if you want to learn even more about Procreate. I have over a hundred tutorials over there, ranging from beginner level to more advanced levels. For this tutorial, we will be using free Procreate brushes only, brushes that are already in the app and a brush from my special treasure chest, which you can get through free from flow. You will find a whole bunch of free brushes there and my ebook about color theory. What you need for this tutorial is a canvas that is 3000 by 2000 pixels with the color profile set to sRGB. And I have created a color palette for you, which I have linked in the description. So if you are ready, let's get started. The first thing we'll do is add a color to our background and we'll go to our color palette for that and pick the second color in the first row. Now just drag the circle onto your canvas to fill the entire canvas. And now we are going to create a new layer. Let's go to the layer menu, the two little squares and tap the plus to create a new layer. And now for our color, we are going to pick this first color in the second row. And for our brush, we will go to the calligraphy brushes and use the script brush. Now I have the opacity of this brush set to 100% and the size is set to 15%. And now we are going to create the hill on which our house will stand later. And we will make sure that the top of the hill will be in the center of our canvas. We'll start about here, we'll go up. And then we'll go down again on this side, all the way to the other side, and then we can drag in the color underneath here. Now we're going to create some hills in the background. Our layer needs to be underneath this hill that we have just created. So first tap layer one, and then tap the plus for a new layer. And now for the color, we are going to use this fourth color in the first row. And we'll start over here, somewhere in the middle. We'll make a wobbly line up. We'll go down over here and then back up. Make another wobbly line all the way to the right side and then we'll fill this area. Then we'll make another layer on top. So tap the plus and for the color, grab this fifth color in the first row. And I will start over here, make another hilly shape, go downwards. And then on this side, we'll go back up like this. And make sure that you go from side to side and then fill the area underneath. Onto our next color and our next layer. First tap the plus for a new layer and then for the color we'll go to the next one which is the sixth color in the first row. Now we'll start over here a little bit lower, go up a little bit. And we'll only add this color to this side so just drop down here and then drag in the color. Onto our next layer, tap the plus again for a new layer. And for the color, grab the seventh color in the first row. This time again, we'll start a little bit lower, make a wobbly shape here, and go all the way to the right until you reach the right side and then you can fill the shape. Then finally, another hill over here. Let's tap the plus for a new layer. And for the color, we'll grab the next one, which is the eighth color in the first row. Let's start about here in the middle and then make a swooping line upwards here. And then all the way to the right and drag the color in. Next, we'll make some hills in front of our middle hill. So first tap layer two and then tap the plus for another layer on top. And for the color, we'll grab this second color in the second row. Then we'll start over here a little bit higher than our initial hill and we'll make a wobbly line like this all the way down and then drag in the color to fill the area. Then we'll make another layer, so tap the plus. And for the color, we'll go to the next one, the third color in the second row. And then we'll start about here, 
make a wobbly line upwards and then down and then drag in a color to fill the area. Now two more hills. Let's tap the plus for a new layer again and go to the next color which is the fourth color in the second row. Start a bit lower over here. Make a wobbly line like this. Drag in the color and then go to the layer menu again. Tap the plus and go to the next color which is the fifth color in the second row. I'll we'll start over here. Make a wobbly line again. All the way to the right and then drag in the color. For our next step, we are going to create some shapes for our trees and we'll start with trees just behind this hill. So we need to create a layer underneath that hill on layer two. So first we'll tap layer seven and then tap the plus for a new layer. Now for our color, we'll grab this one over here, which is the sixth color in the second row. And I will make some rounded diamond shapes. We'll start about here make a shape like this. It's a little bit, well, yeah, like I said, it's a rounded diamond shape. Drag in the color to fill it and then make some more shapes right next to it. And a little one over here, just a little triangular shape. Let's make some more on this side. Another triangular shape, another diamond like shape small one over here and now we are going to add some of these trees to our foreground so we need a layer on top of all the others so first let's go to layer 11 tap the plus for a new layer and we are going to make some rounded triangular shapes so something like this like these cones and vary the sizes. I'll make a small one over here, one that's a little bit bigger, and then another one over here. Now we can drag in the color, and when you do, when you drag it in, tap here at the top, tap continue filling with recolor. Now you'll see this little crosshair, drag it into one of the other shapes, and then you can just tap inside of these shapes to fill those as well. Then we'll go to the layer menu and make a new layer. Tap the plus and we'll switch to a different color. We'll switch to the seven color in the second row and we'll make some more trees right in front of these. More of these triangular shapes. One covering these. Big one over here. And one over here. And then again, drag in the color, tap continue filling with recolor, drag the crosshair and fill these as well. And then just tap the brush to get out of that menu. All right, you're doing great so far. Let's start adding some texture to our landscape before we move on to creating our little house in perspective. To add our texture, we are going to use the spackle brush, which is a brush in my treasure chest brush pack, which is totally free. You can get it through free from flow, grab the spackle lip brush and for the layer we'll start on, let's start on layer one and add some texture to our sky. The color we'll be using is this color over here, the third color in the first row. Now the opacity of this brush is set to 75% and let's set the size to 100%. And now let's go over the top area and add some of that purple there. Well, most of the purple at the top and I want it to be like this spackly gradient. And I'll use very light pressure here at the bottom and more here at the top. And you can switch back to that, to that pink, that second color. And let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's set it to 45%. And you can go over the bottom area and bring back some of that pink. You can just go back and forth until you have this nice spackly texture. And let's move on to the hills. We'll start in the back. So let's go to layer three. We don't want our spackles to show up outside of our hill. So let's turn on alpha lock. We'll tap the layer, turn on alpha lock. And then for the color, let's grab the fifth color in the first row. And let's go over these hills. 
Let's add some of these darker spackles like this. And to add some more interest, we'll go to the selection tool, which is the S shape ribbon. Set it to freehand, make sure that color fill is turned off. And let's make some selections here. And a little bit pointy, a little bit jagged of the top areas of these, of these hills. So just make a zigzaggy line and then go around and tap that little circle. Now we have two selections here. We'll tap the brush again. And for our color, we'll grab this first color in the first row. And I will go over the top area with very light pressure to make that a little bit lighter. And we'll get some variation in that hill. Then tap the S shape ribbon again to turn off the selection. Now let's also go over this lower area for a little bit of like mist. Let's do it over here as well. Just a lower area. And then let's move on to our next hill. Let's go to layer four. We need to turn on alpha lock there as well. Now you can either tap the layer and turn on alpha lock like that, or you can swipe to the right with two fingers. And you'll know that alpha lock is turned on if you see that little checkerboard pattern. Now for our color, let's go to this color over here, the sixth color in the first row. And again, let's just go over the hill Add a little bit of texture on both sides. And let's again make a selection. So go to the S shape ribbon, make a jagged selection of the top area. Loop around, close the selection, do the same on this side. Loop around, close it. And then let's grab that light color again, that first color in the first row then make sure to tap the brush and then go over that area and make it a little bit lighter then tap the s shape ribbon again to get out of the selection and then to make it more subtle i'd like to go over a little bit to blend it just a little you can also add a little bit of that light to the bottom again for some misty effect and then let's move on to the next hill. That's the one here on the left. First, let's turn on alpha lock. Now, since we will be using alpha lock on all of these layers, what you can do is just swipe to the right on all of these layers. So we don't have to do that later. Now they all have alpha lock turned on. They all have that checkerboard pattern. And now let's go and grab our color. Let's grab the sixth color in the second row. And let's go over here. Add a little bit of that darker green. Then let's make a selection again by tapping the S shape ribbon, making a jagged selection. Close the selection, tap the brush, and then for the color, I'd like to grab this color over here, the sixth color in the first row. And now let's go over the top area for a very subtle, lighter look. We can also tap and hold our finger on the screen here to grab this color, which is even lighter, and gently go over. Then tap the S shape ribbon again. And now we'll go and grab this color over here, this pink color. It's the ninth color in the second row. And we will gently go over this lower area for just a little touch of pink now let's move on to the next layer layer six that's the hill that's going from this side all the way to the right here and for our color let's grab this one over here which is a pretty light green it's the ninth color in the first row and let's gently go over the top and over here as well now let's tap and hold and grab a gray over here. I like to add a little bit of light here to the bottom. Perhaps some over here as well. And let's also add some of that pink with the ninth color and the second row. Make it very subtle over here. Just a little touch of pink over here as well. Then we have this hill over here that's layer seven. 
again let's grab that green that light green ninth color in the first row and let's make a selection again by using the s shape ribbon make a jagged shape here close the selection tap the brush add a little bit of that green then turn off the selection by tapping the s shape ribbon and let's go over again to make it more subtle and then we'll switch to the pink again ninth color in the second row and we'll add a little touch of pink here now let's move on to the other hills we'll continue moving forward we'll we'll skip the trees for now we'll do those later let's go to layer two and first let's grab this third color in the second row and let's just go over this lower area and add a bunch of this texture to our hill make that lower area a bit darker we can go even darker by grabbing a darker green that fourth color in the second row and focus on this lower area make that darker right where it touches those other hills so you get something like this and we'll move on to the next hill layer eight we'll grab a different color let's grab this one the fifth color in the second row make this a little bit darker again leave the top to be nice and light but make the lower areas a bit darker so you get this nice soft gradient then move on to layer nine again let's grab a dark green let's grab that fourth color in the second row and make that lower area here darker and I want the top of this hill to be a bit lighter so let's grab a light color let's grab this one over here the last color in the second row and make this top area nice and light so it nicely separates this hill from the one behind it and let's also give a touch of this green to that other hill let's go back to layer 8 just go over the top area for a little bit more light all right let's move on to the next layer 10 let's first grab a bit of a lighter green the third color in the second row go over this top area to get that nice texture over here and now let's go even lighter by grabbing this color first color in the second row and we want to nicely separate these these hills here and we can go even further and grab that last color in the second row again and gently go along the outside for a little bit more light all right on to that final hill layer 11 let's first grab a dark color let's grab this one the fourth color in the second row add a little bit of shadow a little bit of darkness here you can barely see it but it's there and then for some light let's grab the second color in the second row and go along the top area for a little bit of light and making sure that it separates nicely from the other hills like this all right now we'll work some magic on our trees let's go to layer 12 first those are the trees over here and we are going to grab the selection tool the s shape ribbon and make sure that it's set to freehand and that color fill is turned off let's zoom in a little bit and we are going to make these pointy selections go to the middle of the tree like this and then back and then close that selection We'll make multiple of these triangular shaped pointy selections moving to the inside of the tree and make sure that you vary them a little bit some will be a little bit thinner some will be broader on both sides 
over here as well. Now once you have done that, you can swipe with three fingers to remove those areas which you have selected. And now we have these very nice stylized trees. Let's do the same thing over here. Now if you are having trouble seeing your selection, then you can go to the wrench, then to prefs, and then you can turn up the selection mask visibility. If you turn it up to let's say 71% and go to the S shape ribbon and make your selection, you will see that the selection is way more visible. So let's make more of these selections. Vary the shapes a bit. And if you don't like it when your selection is this visible, then of course you can just go back to the wrench, turn it down or up. Let's go somewhere in the middle. Let's go for 48.7%. And then I will swipe with our three fingers again to remove these selections. All right, on to the trees in the front. Let's first go to the correct layers. We will start with layer 13, but let's turn off layer 14 for now so we are better able to see our trees. Go back to the selection tool and we'll make these pointy shaped selections again. Some broad, some thinner. Just make a nice variation. And don't pass the center of the tree. So do this until you have made selections for all of your trees. Move on to this side. final tree on this layer this is a very easy way to make these stylized trees now we need to swipe with three fingers again but if you can swipe with three fingers for whatever reason you can also just go to the layer tap it and then use clear all right move on to layer 14 let's turn it on We'll go back to the selection tool. Let's zoom in a little bit. And these are the final trees that we need to cut or cut into to turn them into these nice stylized trees. These three over here. And you really don't have to give it too much thought. One over here. We're almost there. Then again, we'll need to swipe or go to the layer, tap it and use clear. Now let's add some texture to our trees as well. Let's first do that for layer 12. Make sure to turn on alpha lock because since we use that selection and cleared parts of our layer, alpha lock was turned off again. Let's go to the brushes. Make sure that you are using the spackle brush. And for the color, let's use this one over here, the fifth color in the second row. And let's just add some texture to the tops of these trees. Just a little subtle texture like this. 
and we'll move on to the trees in the front. We'll do something special for these trees. Let's first turn on alpha lock on these layers. We'll swipe to the right with two fingers, nice and fast. On layer 13, we are going to make a selection again first. So go to the S shape ribbon and just make these random selections, these random lines going over these trees. Like little bands. So if you make selections, then you will only be able to paint inside of the selection. So this will give a nice effect when we give texture to these trees. So something like this, these zigzaggy shapes, then we'll tap the brush to get out of that selection menu. And then for our color, let's grab this one. It's the eight color in the second row. And I just go over these areas. Over the selected areas, over our trees. To fill those areas with texture. Now let's turn off the selection to see. I like this. Now let's make a selection again and we'll go over the areas that we haven't selected earlier a bit but it's okay if you go over the areas that you have just selected they can overlap a bit just more random shapes I forgot this one, that needs some selections too. Then tap the brush again, and now for the color, we'll grab a darker color. We'll grab this one over here, the seven color in the second row. And again, we'll go over, this will be a bit more subtle than the light color that we just used, but it will still give a nice effect. Turn off the selection. And now we have nicely textured trees. Let's do the same for the trees in front. Let's go to layer 14. Again, we'll use the selection tool and make these zigzaggy lines over our trees. So you have covered every tree on this layer. Something like this, tap the brush, then go and grab a color. Let's use this one over here, the fifth color in the second row. And let's go over these trees. Like this. Turn off the selection and now we have these really nice textured trees. Let's tap the S shape ribbon again. I'm not sure why we were still in that menu. Now let's move on to the next phase. We are going to create a house in perspective. Now if your iPad can't handle a whole lot of layers then this could be the moment that you merge all of these layers. Or if you want to save these layers, then you can just duplicate your entire project. So you will always have a backup of your layers. First, we are going to create a little sketch of our house. Let's tap the plus for a new layer on which we will create our sketch. And we are going to use the perspective grid. You can turn on the grid by going to the branch over here, then to canvas, and then turn on the drawing guide over here, and then go to edit drawing guide. Now here at the bottom, you'll see perspective. Now what you need to do is first tap on your screen and you will get one vanishing point. We are going to place it outside of our canvas. And you'll want it to be a bit below the center of your canvas. Make sure you have about this area above it. And then tap over here for another vanishing point. And you'll need to make sure that they are on the same line. So you can see that little grid in the background. So make sure that they are just outside of your canvas and on the same line. And if you're having trouble seeing the lines, you can turn up the thickness. But you can also just tap the little circle, use select 
and then tap to change the color and set it to a dark blue, for example. Then once you are done, make sure to turn on assisted drawing and then tap done. Now we are ready to make our sketch. Let's go to the brushes and I'm going to use the chalk pencil brush. Let's just grab a dark gray color. Doesn't really matter what color you use. The opacity of the brush is at 100% and let's set the size to 6%. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's make a little house on top of our hill. If you make these lines, you'll see that it follows the perspective grid. So we'll make a little line upward here and then we'll follow this grid and then we'll go up again. This will be the front of the house. Then we'll move to the side or the side of the house. I want to go a little bit higher and it's okay we're making a sketch so it doesn't have to be perfect this is the side of the house and then we'll make a little line from the center here to the top so we'll know where the top of the roof will be Let's go a little bit higher we'll be about here on that blue line and then we'll go to the right to about here now to make the roof, we'll need to turn off drawing assist on this layer because we, we can't use the perspective grid for that. Tap the layer, turn off drawing assist, so we are able to make lines that don't follow the grid because that front of the house, that well, the area where the roof is, that won't follow the grid. Let's make another line over here. So that it's nicely sticking out a bit. That roof. And over here it'll go across that, that point. Now we need to turn Wrong Assist back on to create the windows and the door. So tap the layer, turn on Wrong Assist. Let's zoom in even more. Let's make a little door over here. That top will follow the perspective grid. And then over here we need windows. Let's make a line following the grid here. And one a little bit lower. Then these upward lines. We'll make a big window over here. And two smaller ones here. Now let's also make windows next to the door. Let's first make a line for the top of our windows. And we'll go down. Make these downward lines and then the lower part. Let's make it align with this window over here. So we'll go here to that corner, then to this side. Now the height is the same on these areas. So we just have this line of the windows to this corner and then to the left side here. And we know that they are all aligned. Here we have that lower part of that roof. We need that to follow the perspective line as well. So now we have a pretty basic sketch. Our house is in perspective. These lines are following these lines to the vanishing point. So the top and this part of the roof and the lower part and the windows, they are moving in that direction. And on this side, they are following those lines. We're going to use this sketch to create our house. We are going to lower the opacity a bit by tapping the N on the layer. Like this, let's go for 55%. And let's make a layer underneath by tapping the plus. Now let's go and grab a color. We'll start with this, that second color and the third row. And now let's go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, set it to rectangle and turn on color fill. Now we'll make a rectangular shape over here like this. And it immediately fills with the color. Now we'll go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow. And we'll set it to distort. 
And let's turn off snapping or magnetics if you have that turned on. And now we can move these handles and make our rectangle follow our sketch. Just use these little handles until it's right in that area of your sketch. Now let's make a new layer underneath this one. So first go to layer 14 and tap the plus for a new layer. And now for our color, we are going to use this first color in the third row. And again, we are going to make a rectangle by going to the S shape ribbon, make a rectangle over here, and then go to the move and transform tool and use these handles to make it align with our sketch. We need to make it a little bit lower like this. Then tap the move and transform tool again and use the selection tool again, the S shape ribbon, but this time set it to freehand. Let's zoom in a little bit, tap over here in the corner, then here at the top, then over here, and then close the selection. Then turn off the selection and let's make another layer on top of layer 16, tap the plus, for the color, we'll grab this one over here. It's the ninth color in the third row. And let's use the selection tool again, set it to rectangle and make a rectangle over here. And again, go to the move and transform tool. You'll need to tap it twice. And then let's make this one follow our sketch. You can just use the corner handles to make it align with your sketch. And of course you can also keep an eye on the grid, on your perspective grid. Now we'll make a layer underneath these three. Let's go to layer 14, tap the plus, and I will grab a different color. Let's grab this one over here, the sixth color in the third row, grab the selection tool and make another triangle. Then go to the move and transform tool again. And let's make this a line. It's a bit hard to see, but you can always change things later, remove parts. Just make sure that it aligns with the grid and then tap the arrow again. I can see that it's sticking out a little bit so we can just go to the selection tool again, turn off color fill, use freehand and select that area that you see is sticking out. Select it and swipe with three fingers to remove it. Now for the windows and doors, let's first make a layer on top of this one, tap the plus and for the color, we'll grab this one, the seven color in the third row Use the selection tool, set it to rectangle, turn on color fill and make a rectangular selection over here. Then go to the move and transform tool and make this align with your window sketch. Then tap the move and transform tool again, then go to the S shape ribbon and turn off color fill. And now we can make a selection over here for this area and over here. And then swipe with three fingers. And now we have our windows over here. Then for the front side, make a new layer by tapping the plus. And for the color, we will grab the fifth color in the third row. Now let's go to the selection tool again. Make sure to turn on color fill. Now let's make a rectangular selection, go to the move and transform tool and create these windows. Tap the arrow again, go to the selection tool again, turn off color fill and I'll make a selection like this. So you can remove that by swiping with three fingers or by going to the layer, tapping it and use clear. Now all we need is our door. Let's make that on a new layer by tapping the plus. Let's use the selection tool again, set it to color fill, make a rectangle over here, then go to the move and transform tool and put it in perspective. 
and align it with the windows. Tap the arrow again. And now let's turn off our sketch. By just tapping the check mark and we can see our basic house. I think it's looking pretty good. Let's give it some texture, but first we'll turn off our grid. Let's go to the wrench, turn off the drawing guide and then tap the wrench again. Zoom in a little bit again. And let's make sure that alpha lock is turned on on each of these layers. We can just swipe to the right with two fingers. And let's start with this one with layer 17. For the brush, we are going to use the spackle brush again. And we are going to make it a bit smaller. Let's set it to 10% in size. And for the color, we are going to use this one over here, the fourth color in the third row. And let's just go over this area, add some shadow to this area of the house. And there's more shadow here at the top where the roof is blocking the sun. So something like this. Now let's move on to the side of the house, layer 16. Let's first grab this third color in the third row and add some subtle pink here. And now let's add more shadow just underneath the roof. You can also switch to that darker purple, that or pink, that fourth color in the third row and add even more. Because of course that roof here, it's blocking the sunlight there. Now when you zoom in, I can see that my roof, it's not covering that area entirely. So let's go to that layer, that layer 18. Let's go to the move and transform tool. And let me just move it a little bit. Now it's covering that area. Then tap the arrow again. And now let's add some texture to this layer. First, I want to use this third color in the third row and just go over the roof and add a slight texture. Now we'll go and use the selection tool again, the S shape ribbon, set it to freehand, turn off color fill. And we are going to make like these scales, almost like fish scales. Make a selection like this, close it, tap the brush, and for the color, grab this one over here, that last color in the third row. And then go over and add some of that light orange. Now let's tap and hold the S shape ribbon to go back to the selection menu and use invert. So now the selection is inverted and we can only paint on this area. Grab a different color. Let's grab that fourth color in the third row. Then tap the brush and gently go over this area for a little bit of shadow there. Then tap the S shape ribbon again to get out of the selection. And then we'll repeat this process. So go to the S shape ribbon, make some more of these fish scales, loop around, close the selection, grab the brush, and for the color, grab that light orange, last color in the third row. And then just go over this area, make it lighter. Then tap and hold, use invert, for the color, grab the fourth color in the third row, grab the brush, and go over that lower area. Tap the S shape ribbon again, and then again, and make another selection. Loop around, close it, grab the light orange, grab the brush, and go over that lower area. And again, you can tap and hold, use invert, grab that darker pink fourth color in the third row, grab the brush and go over. Then one more time, turn off the selection, go back to the selection, select this, loop around, close it, grab the light orange, grab the brush, and go over here. Now turn off the selection, 
And let's add a little bit more orange to that lower side, make it more subtle. And now let's go back to that illustration brush. That calligraphy brush, I mean, the script brush, which we have used earlier. For our color, we are going to use this one over here, last color in the first row. Let's set the size to 5% and we'll go along the edge here like this and over here as well. You can hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick shape or the quick line. And just give a little bit of volume to that roof. Now it doesn't seem like it's a piece of paper, but it has some thickness. Now let's add texture to the windows. Let's start with layer 20. Let's go back to the spackle brush. We can actually just move all the way up and go to recent brushes and use the spackle brush. Then for our color, let's grab the fifth one in the third row. Now let's just gently go over these windows and add a little bit of texture. Now I want to move to the script brush again. Grab a different color, that first color in the first row. And now we'll add some, some lines to these windows here at the top, at the bottom, and to the sides to give these windows some frames. Then we'll make a thin line like this. Hold your pen in place to make it switch to the quick line and one over here. Now let's move on to the other windows, layer 21. Then go to the brushes, use the spackle brush. And for our color, we'll grab this one over here, seven color in the third row. Gently go over these windows. Then grab the script brush again. We'll stick with this color and add window frames here as well. It's very subtle, but it adds a little extra touch. Then finally for our door, layer 22. For the brush, go back to the spackle brush. And for the color, we'll grab this dark color over here. It's the eighth color in the third row. And just go over the area, mostly the top right area. That's where the most shadow is. Now let's do the same for that inside of the roof, actually. That's layer 19. Make sure that alpha lock is turned on and add a subtle shadow there. You might not even be able to see it on camera. Now let's make a layer on top of our house. So look, let's go to layer 18, tap the plus. Then for our color, let's grab this seven color in the second row. And for the brush, grab the script brush again. And now we are going to make a wobbly line here at the top of our roof. And then over here, we'll make a little chimney. Just a rectangular shape. And then we'll move to the back of the roof. Just a wobbly line, fill it as you go. It's as if there is a bunch of moss growing here at the top of our house. And then let's turn on alpha lock on this layer. Just tap it, turn on alpha lock, and now we'll grab a lighter green. Let's grab that fifth color and the second row. And we'll go over the top, make another wiggly line, just to lighten up some of those top parts. And here the top of the chimney and the right side, just like this. Next, we are going to add some bushes to our scene. We'll add a new layer by tapping the plus. And for our color, we are going to use this one over here, sixth color in the second row. And let's just create some bushes in front of our little house. You can color them in by hand, or you can use the fill tool, of course. Just some shapes like this, very simple. One over here. And you can drag in the color to fill these shapes, of course. Then let's tap the plus for a new layer for some more bushes. For the color, we are going to use this one over here, the fifth color in the second row. And we'll just make some more bushes in front of the others.
Just a bit like cloud like shapes. And once you have something like this, you can turn on alpha lock on these layers and then go to the spackle brush. And let's stick with this color that we're already using. We are on layer 24 and just add some subtle texture to these bushes. Now for the bushes in front, that's layer 25. First turn on alpha lock. Then go switch to color, use the sixth color in the second row and darken that lower side a little bit of these bushes. There. Now since the light is coming from over here, you can see that because we have a shadow on our house, there will also be a shadow on the grass. That house will be casting a shadow, so let's make that area a little bit darker. Let's go to our layer, layer 2 that is. Let's grab a dark green, or actually we already have a dark green. The sixth color in the second row. And let's just go over this area and add a little bit of shadow there. A few rounded motions, just like this. Now for the final touches for our illustration, we are going to add some color to our hills. Let's go and create a layer on top of our hill shape. So on top of layer 11, tap the plus and let's set the layer blending mode of this layer to color. We'll do that by tapping the N and we'll go down to color and we will lower the opacity of this layer to 27% because we are going to add a subtle pink touch to the field, to the hills here. So for the color, we are going to use this one over here, ninth color in the second row. And for the brush, we need the script brush. Let's set the size of this brush to 15% again. And let's just make some random shapes, rounded shapes on our hills for some nice extra touches over here as well. Some small, some a little bit bigger. And of course you can use the fill tool, just drag in the color, then use continue filling with recolor. Try and find the crosshair. I can see it's over here. Drag it into one of the shapes and then just tap in the other shapes to fill those as well. Now we'll make another layer, go to the layer menu, tap the plus, and this one will set to multiply. Now color, which we just used, changes the color of an area and multiply makes it a bit darker. It's nice for shadows. Tap the end, scroll up, set it to multiply. Now let's lower the opacity to 20%. And for our color, let's go and use this fourth no, fifth color in the second row. And let's make some more shapes. More of these rounded shapes. You can overlap a bit with the pink ones. They don't have to. We're just trying to vary it a little bit. Some over here. Some very small, you can add one over here. And then drag in the color, use continue filling with recolor. Then just tap in these shapes. Those are a little bit small, I can't fill those this way. Then tap the brush again, let's just fill these by hand. And now we have some nice variation. I just want to add a final little touch and add some smoke coming out of the chimney. We are going to create that on a separate layer, of course. We'll do that all the way at the top. Tap the plus. For our color, we'll grab this first color in the first row. And for the brush, we still need the script brush. And now we are going to make a swooping line moving upwards. And you might need a couple of tries to get this right. Don't worry, maybe I did this like a hundred times. Start at the chimney. 
swoop up and then on the other side go back to the chimney then drag in the color to fill that shape and then add some extras like over here a little one over here over here some here and some more over here and then make sure that you fill these areas you can do that by hand or by using the fill tool and you might need to tidy up some areas like this you can tap and hold the eraser to make it switch to the script brush and then you can make this more tidy Finally, I need to fill this area. And now let's just lower the opacity to make it more subtle. So tap the N and let's set the opacity to 70%. There. There's your little house in the hills. I hope you have enjoyed following this tutorial. If you did, then please let me know in the comments and hit that thumbs up, of course. It's totally free and you will be supporting the channel. And now that you have finished this tutorial, why not make it a streak? Go ahead and follow the next tutorial. Maybe you will like this one, for example. I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.